All right, in the last video, I mentioned that I would talk a little bit about nutrition in this video. And I'm going to go through and show you fairly quickly how I make sure that my sheep are getting the nutrition that they need. Where I start out is with this Excel spreadsheet. Uh, this is something I put together based off of values from the uh, National Research Center. So this is using values from them for sheep nutrition. Um, I'm going to go through this fairly quick, but it just gives you an idea of what you can do with uh, a spreadsheet like this. There's others available from different places. I simply go in here and there's a whole list of ingredients that can be fed to sheep. Most of them are not available in my area. And I always start my uh, feeding program based on my hay. So I bought this hay. All these values down here are standard values. So I really don't change those. Up here I can put in uh, my hay. I had it analyzed. I know what I paid for it. And so I come up here and this is just a short list of ingredients that I'm going to work with. So I don't have to look through this big long list every time I want to pick something. So these are the ingredients that I may use. We'll see how it works out. I go back over here to my uh, sheep ration tab and I'm working with mature ewes. There's other sections down here for replacement ewes and weaning lambs and things like that. We're working with mature ewes. They're in late gestation, expecting twins. They're really about 154 pound ewes. They're in pretty good body condition. We're gonna give them a two and a half. So like I said, I'm going to start with my hay as my main ingredient. And I'm going to say that I feed them this. Um, it says pounds of dry matter. They need 4.2 pounds of dry matter. So the hay is uh, only 89% dry matter. Let's start them out with four and a half pounds of hay. By feeding four and a half pounds of hay, I'm feeding a 15% crude protein, a 60% total digestible nutrients. Um, this is red, so I'm a little short on their dry matter, which I'm okay with. These are very pregnant ewes. They've only got so much room to uh, eat forage of any kind, so I don't want to try to make them eat more than they can hold. So I'm okay if this is a little short. I don't necessarily like being a little short on the TDN, which is the energy. I'm actually high on protein, calcium, and phosphorus. My calcium to phosphorus ratio is okay. I want it to be at least a 2 to 1 ratio, and I'm at 3.2 to 1. So that's, that's good. Wouldn't mind having a little more TDN. And since I'm a little short on dry matter, it's okay if I give them a little more hay. So at four and three quarters pounds of hay, that's a little more dry matter than they need. I'm pretty much right on the mark with the TDN. I'm still a little high on these others, but that's okay. Uh, You'll also notice it's costing me 71 cents per head per day to feed this hay. Now this is where I might go in and decide, since I'm high on protein anyway, I could feed some corn. If we fed a pound of corn and... Uh, cut back on the hay. Let's take a pound of hay away. 
So I'm still good on my dry matter. I'm high on TDN, still high on everything, but I've dropped to 65 cents per head. Since I'm still high on everything, uh, maybe I can cut this back a little more. Now I've got down to 62 cents and I'm still high on everything. But you can see how you can play around with these numbers. Make sure you're maintaining your nutrition and I can work on my price. Now what I'm finding is here pretty quick. So far I've saved nine cents per head per day by cutting back on the hay and feeding corn. Now, if you're feeding a thousand ewes, that is definitely worth it. But for me, I'm I'm feeding 30 head. It's not worth that, you know, eight, ten cents a day um, to have to feed the corn. I'd rather just feed the hay and be done with it. So I'm just not going to worry with feeding hay. I'm gonna go back to feeding. Let's say four pounds. Forgot what I was at. Four and three quarters pounds of this hay that I purchased. Everything looks good. All my values are either on the mark or a little high. If they're high, then especially like the protein. Yeah, basically I'm I'm wasting some protein. Um I'm paying for it and not getting a real good benefit out of it other than the convenience of not having to feed anything other than the hay. So as I said, I'm feeding uh, 30 head of sheep. The only thing I'm feeding is hay. So it's just this one line. This thousand out here, don't pay attention to that. That's if you're doing a total mix ration. Since this line, the hay is the only thing I'm feeding, uh, feeding 30 head, forget about the thousand pound uh, thing here, but it is, a, that is their total ration is the hay. So I'm going to feed four and three quarters pound of hay per day per head for 30 sheep, the whole flock is going to get 142 and a half pounds of hay per day. Now, when I calculate that out, 142 and a half pounds divided by 53 pound small square bales, and I've weighed my bales, that's about what they average. I only need to feed, well, 2.68 bales per day. So, that's not bad. Really, I've, I've been giving them three bales a day and they're cleaning all of that up. So I know they're getting plenty of nutrition and uh, they're able to eat everything that I'm giving them. And I'm not asking them to eat way more than they should. I'm on a 15% protein, 60% TDN, calcium phosphorus is good. I think I'm good just feeding the hay that I purchased. And this is why I highly recommend everybody have your hay tested. Uh, although this is a little bit expensive hay, generally speaking, your hay is going to be your cheapest food source. Uh, yeah, corn's, corn is cheaper than this hay, but I can't just feed them corn. And for the convenience, I'm just going to feed the hay. So... I guess I better go feed the sheep. On the subject of nutrition, uh, one part you can't overlook is the salt and minerals. Now I've got uh, some pre-mixed uh, minerals that I bought from a uh, co-op here. It's a sheep mineral. It seems to do pretty good. The uh, one thing it doesn't have is any medication for uh, coccidia. Now the lambs are going to be born in about three weeks what it should be and in order to help cut down on the incidence of coccidia in the lambs I need to treat the ewes beforehand so that they're not shedding the coccidia 
eggs, we'll call it, um, for the lambs to pick up later. Uh, the ewes themselves, the coccidia really doesn't bother them. Once sheep get um, exposed to the coccidia, and after they're, you know, several months, year old, they pretty well develop an immunity to it, but it can cause a lot of problems in young lambs. Uh, it can kill them, and it, it can, um, even if it doesn't kill them, it will make them to where they just never perform well. They'll never put on much weight. It messes up their ability to absorb nutrients for the rest of their life. So it really is something you need to kind of keep an eye on and stay on top of. Now you could have medication mixed into your feed, and I've done that before. I, I like that option a lot of times. But uh, this year I'm going to put it in the mineral. And since the mineral I have is not medicated, I have to mix it up myself. Now, what I use, I use a medication called uh, Decox. And I really should have started this program a couple of weeks ago, but I got ready to mix some of this up. I realized that uh, I didn't have any medication. I thought for sure I had some, so I had to order it. It got here today. I'm going to go ahead and get it mixed up. This calls for mixing it uh, five pounds of the Decox to 50 pounds of salt. And the bag of salt I have, I've already fed some out of it, so it's not a full 50 pound bag. I have mixed it up before like that, just in a uh, concrete mixer. Um, I don't really like putting salt in my concrete mixer, but it works. Then you've got all 50 pounds of salt that you need to store somewhere in some buckets or something. But this time I'm gonna mix it up in a smaller batch and I'm going to show you how I figure how much of it to put in and how it's really pretty simple to do this just with a kitchen scale. And you don't have to mix up a huge batch. If you've just got a few sheep and 50 pounds of salt last you all year, you don't. I don't feed the coccidia all year. I feed it when it's needed and then I don't the rest of the time. So this is pretty basic math when we do this. We're doing... Um, this over here five pounds of decox to 50 pounds of salt so we just divide the five pounds of decox by the 50 pounds of salt you get 0.1 pound of decox per pound of salt though there's 16 ounces in a pound times 16, that is 1.6 ounces of decox per one pound of salt. I know that's pretty basic math. You probably didn't even need to see that, but that's how I figure it. Now all I have to do, get my kitchen scale. So we'll make sure I'm on pounds and ounces. And I'm going to put in, probably going to do two pounds at a time here. 14, 15, two pounds. So that's two pounds of salt. And I did uh, start with this already on the scale, so I'm not weighing the container. Here's my two pound bag of decox. A lot smaller container on here because I only need 1.6 ounces per pound. Now because I'm measuring such a small amount, I got two pounds of salt, I need 3.2 ounces of decox to add to that. And this scale is not real accurate on uh, pounds and ounces. So I'm going to set it to grams. So I need 88 grams of decox to this two pounds.
88 grams. Now that I know that, I can write that down 44 grams per pound. And if I want to mix up five pounds or 10 pounds or however much I want to mix up, it's just 44 grams of decox per pound of salt. It's not that difficult. I just thought I'd go through how I would mix up a smaller batch of this. Now I can just mix this up in a bucket. It won't be quite as good as uh, mixing in a mixer. We'll put about half the salt in, about half the decox. Uh, stir that around, mix it up a little bit. Rest of the salt. Rest of the decox. Just try to get it mixed where it looks pretty uniform. And there's two pounds of medicated salt and mineral. Probably gonna mix 